All right, today I wanna to talk about golfer's elbow and how you can avoid some of the common pitfalls that increase your chances of developing this really annoying condition. So if you're finding the content useful, please like and please subscribe. And don't forget, you can visit the website for information on consultations, custom programs, or free programs. And you can join the community for more in-depth discussions on training, nutrition, and programming. And I'll put a link to these in the description below. Okay, so a quick overview. Golfer's elbow is this painful injury that is an overuse injury that can be very stubborn and very persistent. And it's essentially damage to the tendons that attach to this bony knob on the inside of your elbow. And this knob is an attachment point for a ton of different muscles, like the ones that close your grip and flex your wrist and pronate your forearm. And these are muscles that are heavily recruited in pulling movements like pull-ups and chin-ups. And just like with any other overuse injury, if your training stress exceeds the capacity of the connective tissue to handle it, you can run into some problems. So there's a few common mistakes that lead to this issue, but the good news is I think it's pretty easily avoided. So number one, doing too much volume at too high of an intensity. In beginners, it's often suggested that to get your first pull up, you should do a bunch of isometrics and negatives. And when you can finally get that first single rep, you should start doing a bunch of singles. So this is a recommendation essentially for an untrained, unconditioned beginner to work with a weight that is at or above their one rep max. And we don't really treat any other exercise in the gym like this. So imagine if you were a 45 year old guy, you're sedentary, you're untrained, you're looking to get in shape and you have this goal of benching 225. No one would suggest that you go to the gym on the first day, load up 225 and start doing a bunch of negative reps with that, right? So like, if you did that, it would be a miracle if it didn't up and it didn't end up in an orthopedic disaster. So the other common scenario I see this is with advanced athletes who are essentially doing the same thing, at, but with one arm chin up work. Okay, so the second common scenario, doing just too much volume too quickly and not building up to volume. So this is common in intermediates that are chasing max pull up counts. A common scenario, maybe someone does three sets of pull ups twice a week and they wanna boost their numbers. So they think they're gonna start doing 100 a day, six days a week. And you know, a couple weeks in, they might get some elbow soreness, but they push through it. And a month later, they have full blown golfer's elbow. And this is really, really common. But again, imagine doing this with any other exercise in the gym and you wouldn't be surprised if you got hurt. And I would say the final factor that increases your risk is just poor form in general. So arm pulling, over gripping, kipping, excessive use of momentum, et cetera, are all gonna put additional stress on the connective tissue. And you combine that with the other two factors and you have a pretty high risk of developing this condition. Okay, so you can avoid all of this by appropriate use of intensity. So don't use strength intensities for your volume work, especially if you're a beginner. So you need to build a foundation and condition those tissues before you start doing one rep max training, okay? Number two, add volume slowly. So rapid increases in training volume. That's kind of like the classic way to get an overuse injury. So there's nothing wrong with doing a bunch of volume, but systematically increase it over time. Don't just 10X your volume in one week and expect that to go well, right? So number three, use proper technique. This, should, this is kind of like a reoccurring theme for this channel, but focus on your form, focus on recruiting the target musculature and stop your set when your form degrades below your technical standard. If you do get golfer's elbow or you suspect you are developing it, go get it checked out by a sports doc or a good physical therapist, all right? So addressing it early can make it much more manageable than waiting until it sets in. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. That's gonna be it for today and I'll see you in the next video.